Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from theebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Kindle Paperwhite 2. So on the outside, it's pretty much identical to the Kindle Paperwhite 1. Uh, as you can see here, it has the same exact shape, design. And on the back, the only difference is the new one says Amazon, the old one said Kindle. So uh, yeah, they're like 90% the same on the outside. If you had like a cover for the first one, it'll definitely work for the second one. Uh, the real changes come is uh, from the hardware on the interior of things. So we've got a new processor on the new Kindle Paperwhite. Uh, and most importantly, we've got a new screen. Uh, it's got like a new front light. Uh, so it definitely is a lot wider than the Kindle Paperwhite, the original one. I, if you've read my blog, you know that I talked about a lot of uh, discolorations with the front light on the original. It had sort of a hue here. It's kind of hard to tell with the lighting and the uh, video camera. But uh, it's definitely a lot better, more even lighting on the new Kindle Paperwhite. Uh, it's got just a touch of shadow down here. I think from the uh, LED light layer, it's just sort of a nature of the LEDs, but otherwise, I mean, it's very, very uniform. It doesn't have any of the uh, discolorations that the original had. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera here, but uh, the original definitely has a lot more of a blotchy tone to it right here in the middle, whereas the new one, it's just really crystal clear and really white. I do really like the screen on the new uh, Kindle Paperwhite for sure. It's definitely, uh, definitely worth the upgrade just for the screen alone based on if you have a blotchy screen on your original Paperwhite that bothers you because the screen is definitely a lot uh, more uniform on this uh, Kindle Paperwhite too. So it also has the e-ink Carta screen which is the latest screen tech from e-ink. I gotta say though the difference really isn't that significant. I mean text may be a slight hair darker. Uh, the biggest difference obviously is just the background just seems a little bit wider. It's hard to tell if that's the screen or the uh, the uh, just the front light layer is different because when you have the Kindle Paperwhite you can't turn the light off completely. You can go all the way down and when you're comparing the two with the screen all the way down you can definitely uh, see that it's a little bit lighter on the new one but and the text is a little darker. It's just really hard to pinpoint the difference between e ink card or e ink pearls basically what I'm getting down to here. So let's go ahead and move on with the review. Let me show you some of the other new features they've added with the software. It's kind of a catch though because usually Amazon updates their older Kindle so the Kindle Paperwhite 1 will probably end up getting the same features that the uh, separates the uh, Kindle Paperwhite 2 here so basically just a couple of do new things they've got this uh, page skip uh, feature here so pops up this little window you can jump chapters right here if you hit the little arrows actually I tapped that which didn't skip the chapter if we hit this uh, it skips the chapter if you hit like on the line here you can skip ahead a lot so then it'll bring it up right here you can also do fast page scanning so if you just want to hold down like on this arrow right here, I'll scan through the pages quickly. And then what it is here is if you touch right here, it'll take you to that page. And then you can jump back if you wanted to. You can hit this, um, hit the back button up there, the menu. And then so like I said, you can swipe up to get to this. Uh, another way to get to this, so if you wanted to exit this, you just tap outside the window. You hit the Xbox right here. And another way to get to it is if you have the regular menu open, you can tap down here. So this is just sort of a new uh, page turning feature. It is pretty cool if you just want to sort of skip ahead if you're reading uh, some like uh, nonfiction book or something and you've got to skip the chapters. But Okay, so one of the other new features is just basically how uh, the dictionary setup works here. So if you select a word, uh, it also adds a Wikipedia window over here. Uh, it, it used to just have like a link for it and whatnot. It used to have uh, everything's integrated now with this different window here. So like if we pick a name out of this book, It'll actually uh, launch the X-ray as well, so uh, you get gets in here and it tells you the exact, uh, tells you all about the character, uh, which is pretty cool about X-ray. It it varies between books if it's available or not. So for this book, it's got uh, it'll tell you the different characters available or characters that are listed in the book and in the chapter, and you can like uh, get diff additional information um, from Wikipedia and from Shelfari uh, based on that. So it does come on helpful for books that you have like. A lot of characters in. I did a full review of X-Ray. You can check that out if you want. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to one of the other new features. Is just the way that bookmarks work. So if you tap in the corner here, it'll ask you if you want to hit it. So it's actually a two-step process now. So you have to hit the uh, uh, add the bookmark, and then as you've seen right there, it also lists your other bookmarks. So you can just quickly jump to other bookmarks, and as you see, it pops up the window pane again. So you can actually see the page where that's at, and you can jump to it if you want. Um, another thing is the way that the uh, Footnotes works. I couldn't really find a footnote. It's kind of hard to find when you want to find one. But if you click on it, it just brings up a window, sort of like the dictionary, and then you get the info in there without actually leaving the page. It's uh, one of the new uh, software features as well. All right, so let me go ahead and show you this front light at some different levels. Right now, I got it maxed out. Let me turn off this light that's on this green here, and let me show you a little bit different uh, how it looks in different lighting conditions here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down a little. So when you're reading at night, you usually want to have it turned all the way like towards the lower level when the room's totally dark. I've been doing some reading with it at night and I am very pleased with the uh, 
even as to the lighting on the screen, it is very nice. This is probably the best front light yet, to be honest with you. It takes the, uh, I'm giving it the nod over the Kobo's. It definitely uh, has less shadowing than the Kobo's now. Um, I'm thinking Amazon definitely has the top notch for uh, the front light now. Okay, like the other Kindles, you got the time left in chapter down here. If you tap on it, you can bring up the option to show time left in book, and it also shows the location and page numbers if available. And you just keep tapping and scanning through there. Um, another thing we've got here, another new feature, um, is the vocabulary builder, which gets added to your home screen in the uh, folder right here. If we open this up, it will show all the words. It automatically lists all the words you've looked up in the dictionary so that you can uh, just access them quickly right here and get some different information on this. You can delete them and you can kind of manage your list here for words and it also has some different uh, sorting options right here. So the vocabulary builder is new. Um, that's pretty much it for new features to be honest with you. Uh, it's pretty much just like any other old Kindle like right now the Kindle Paperwhite has the same interface on the home screen as you can see here. Uh, by default it shows some recommended titles down here which takes up a whole lot of space so you can go into settings and go into device option to get rid of those um, and it definitely makes it look a lot better. You can also sort your home screen by different sections. So you got the documents, the periodicals, and you got your like active content, which is like the games. Like so, I got Blackjack on here. Uh, some of the active content works. Not like all of Amazon's active content work works on the Kindle Paperwhite. Some of the old ones they never got updated for the newer devices, it seems. But for the most part, a lot of them work. And then you can just go in here and play some Blackjack. So some of the other Kindle features, uh, you can do notes and highlights like usual. Uh, the Capacitive touchscreen works pretty well for adding the highlights. It's pretty smooth. So as you can see in here, we can add the highlights, we can share, we can add text notes, we can also translate into other languages. We can search on Wikipedia. So let's pop up the translation here. You can like uh, um, switch different languages here from English to uh, there's a whole bunch of different options here. So we can go ahead and translate to German if we wanted to, and we'll get that selection here. This uses a uh, Bing translator. Uh, so uh, another things we've got with this are just the usual text adjusting options. Um, one thing that they did though is they changed the uh, alternate fonts trick. So with the Kindle Paperwhite one, you could add all your sideload your own fonts and do this little cool trick to make all these fonts appear on here. Uh, it doesn't work on the Kindle Paperwhite too. You just got the six base fonts. Um, certainly someone will figure it out eventually, probably how to uh, add some fonts onto here. But otherwise, you just got these six, or you can embed your own fonts, like using Caliber. Um, we've got the variable font sizes, of course, in case you've got some bad eyesight, you can get these really huge fonts. Of course, you can be fitting much on the page, but you can also switch over to landscape mode, is something that Kindles offer. It's up here in the settings. Here we go. There we go. Landscape mode. So then you got everything on the sideways, which is a little bit better for a larger font like that. Let's go ahead and switch it back. As you can see, it's definitely a little bit zippier with the uh, faster processor than it used to be. We've also got the line spacing, the typical line spacing and margin adjustments down here. As you can see, uh, I've got partial refresh set off right now. I have noticed ghosting uh, more on this Kindle Paperwhite than I did on the previous Kindle Paperwhite, even though um, E-Ink's e using this new thing called Regal Waveform Technology that's supposed to uh, help with that, but the Kindle it doesn't refresh as much as it used to because of the Regal Waveform Technology, but I do notice some more uh, uh, ghosting, you can kind of see in the lines here. It's really not that big of a deal, but I usually kind of like the crisper text, so I go into settings and change the uh, pull, full page refresh off, which is something you can do down here in reading options. So you can turn p page refresh on so that it refreshes every page instead of uh, like every eight pages or so on the uh, partial refresh setting. So then you get the black refresh that every time. Some people don't like that where it refreshes the black, um, the whole screen like that. But you can. Uh, change it how you want, it just depends on how you, uh, your personal preference. So one thing I always like about Kindles is that they give information on hand here and the e-ink Kindles that is the Kindle Fires do not have this kind of information where you get like info about the book description and about the author. One thing I really like about the Kindle Paperwhite over the Kindle Fire tablets is like when you're browsing through your ebook library so like I have a whole bunch of books on uh, in the cloud, a couple hundred books here so sometimes I don't really know what to download and then if you want to just get an idea of what the book's about on the Kindle Paperwhite, you can just hold down and then you'll go to the book description. That'll go ahead and direct to Amazon's website with the book description. It'll connect Wi-Fi and it'll also uh, set up down here where you got the reviews. So if you kind of don't know exactly what all your books are about, I really like this feature, just being able to go over and see what a book's about, see what the book's reviews are. Uh, that's one thing that really irritates me about the Kindle tablets is 
Uh, you hold down on a book on the Kindle tablet, it's the only option you get to add it to the home screen or to add it to your device. So uh, that's one thing I could never understand why Amazon didn't add those features to the tablets, but it's one thing that really makes their uh, the ink readers unique and makes them more useful uh, along with some of the other features like we've got here. Uh, it's just a little bit easier, like you can add collections. I guess cl cloud collections are coming to the Kindle Fire at some point, but it's been forever, so there's like no... Uh, there's like no priority as far as e-reading on the Kindle tablets. There's not as much priority as there is on the Kindle Fire or on the Kindle Paperwhite, in my opinion. If you want e-reading, you definitely just want to read books. You don't want to be distracted with music and video games and all this stuff. Uh, definitely is the way to go. I really do like the Paperwhite for reading. It's definitely my favorite e-reader now just because the screen's so much more uniform than it was on the last one. The last one always kind of bugged me with the darkness in the middle of the screen. It always uh, kind of distracted me while I was reading, but this one is definitely a lot easier to read just because of the clear nature of the screen so uh, it's definitely an incremental improvement because I mean nothing really has changed I mean most people wouldn't even notice the difference as far as the outside of the device goes uh, screen's just a little bit nicer uh, it's a little bit faster so uh, it's definitely an improvement over the uh, previous Kindle and uh, as far as I'm concerned it's one of the best e-readers that you can buy I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this review right here check out the ebookreader.com for some additional information uh, and I'm also going to post some comparison reviews between this and some Kobos and the new Nook that's coming out. So uh, check back soon and thank you for watching.